Hi, and welcome back to part two of my dog. Um, haven't painted on him since. I have looked at him a lot. Let me show you one area where I discovered that I was off quite a bit. Get my brush out so I can kind of show you. <clears throat> this part of him is not low as it should be. Um, see how wide, how long that his muzzle is. Um, on the photo, you know, look where it comes out in comparison to, ear, to his ear. It's way down here. And I, I drew a little line here with some charcoal. I've got to bring this down. <clears throat> and then we've got to explain. Kind of unusual, isn't it? All this that's going on in there. So I want to try to explain that. But I need, I need to bring him down. I feel like I kind of shortened him up. Um, but I'm liking him pretty well. We need to put in some toenails and, um, you know, some little adjustments. But he's painterly, and I like a lot of things about him. I think, I think his eye is pretty good. So we'll keep working on him. We have to decide how I want to handle the... Uh, the couch and the pillows and uh, boy, how did I lose him there? Let me bring it up again so you can look at it again. There it is. I have to decide. It's just a neutral colored couch and wall. The pillow obviously is darker. So, <clears throat> um, you know, I'll leave some of the color showing through. We might even get some palette knife in there to create some texture. I'm not, I'm not real sure at this point how we're going to handle it. But we're going to work on the dog some more. Uh, I'm going to, again, bring this down, get some toenails in, and just decide what, what needs to be changed. Um, when we do the background in, the ear comes here, the leg comes in. So we'll be painting that in and making that correction. So, all right, let's move on. So, again... I'm going to mix up some of this brown color again. If you remember, I had made an orange off to the side, and um, I'm going to do that again just for the heck of it. And then take the transparent red oxide, which is really a nice color for most of him. Darken a little bit of that, too. All right, let's see what we can do here. Get us a paper towel. Got to have a lot of those, don't you, to paint. All right, so this needs to come down, this dark area here, because as I look at this, yeah, I just uh, kind of, I because I shortened this, I think it made him feel a little more like a beagle than a basset. You know, because they have quite the boxy face. All right. And I may have to, I might actually set my iPad up here while we, you know, while we're working on his face. Hopefully you still have a good view. So I can zoom in a little bit. Let me look at the angle at the top of that nose and bring it over. That's about right. Years ago, I remember our neighbor across the street had a basset. Um, her, her, I think, female Basil was her name. She didn't live very long. I don't know if that's a common thing or not, but I regret not getting some photos of her at the time. Do 
using kind of a big brush. someone ask about sharing the image I can't I can't do that um, but I was saying to her you know there are um, sites online that sell and I think maybe even sometimes they're free uncopyrighted images and you can get on those sites and look for images that you can use I'll tell you coming up with good photos there's a lot of the oh, you know problem that an artist has so that's why sometimes they won't share their photos and uh, and photos are copyrighted too so you want to be careful and use your own references or have permission to paint them because they are copyrighted you can get in trouble for um, taking someone's photo which you know photography is an art and people get paid for their photos and I get it completely you just want to be careful and like copying paintings too you don't want to do that unless you have permission or unless you're doing it just for practice I don't see anything wrong with that you know if you're not going to sell it I don't see any harm in it I had somebody recently on Facebook show me <laughs> look I painted your painting it was a painting I would posted on Facebook and uh, I don't know that you know she planned to sell it I don't think so but I just said you know that's fine just you can't sell it and yeah again I don't know that she would had any intentions of doing that it's just kind of a surprise always when you see somebody's painted your painting gosh a lot of countries just steal artwork from good artist in this country and it's hard to fight it hopefully that feels boxier and lower now I should have carried in one of the postcards. I told you they used one of my images for an upcoming show. Um, I can show you the painting. And there's an awful lot of glare on it. It's hanging over there on the wall. I don't know how good it would look if I. brightening that up where I felt like it was catching more light let me get a little brush here to little gnarly liner brush Ok. 
cut into that. That little edge is lighter and catching more light. We'll see if we like it or not. throwing in a few little highlights where I see them. All right, let's um, let's look at those feet. Zoom in on those toenails, see what we see. A lot of dark, which we've got in, and then um, some lines between. So let's um, think about that, but I'm not going to do them too dark. Let me show you a little painting I said here I was going to show you. Um, sometimes I paint over canvases. Sometimes I just throw them away. I don't know about you. Sometimes I just, I say it's an artist's right to throw their work away, and sometimes I just throw them away. This is one I scraped down. Um, it's a centurion panel, and I was going to paint over it. And when I scraped it all down, <laughs> there's things I kind of like about it now. It's a jack-in-the-box that I had painted. Um, when I scraped it down, I kind of liked the way his face felt. It felt like an old toy with the paint chipping off, doesn't it? What I'm thinking about is uh, maybe repainting the background, maybe even lighten it up. But I was going to pitch it, but I don't know. It has a kind of charm about it now. I kind of like the way it feels. So I may play with that yet instead of throwing it away or painting over it. Yeah, I thought, you know, it just feels like a chippy old toy to me now. All right, let's look at these toenails again. I'm 
just going to try to paint what I see. I can hear, I don't really see the nail, I just see the highlight. This one I see some of the nail. Do something with that. Years ago, we had a half dachshund, half cocker, and it was a really cute dog. It had little short legs like a dachshund and then long hair. Of course, they make long-haired dachshunds. They make, like they're something they manufacture. Um, there are long-haired dachshunds now, which I think are the cutest dogs. Maybe too much orange right there. Like I said, we're going to have to cut in right here, his ear ends here, and then the body kind of goes out like that. Him a little more tail there, I think. Um, down in that 
hole there I'm seeing some of that brown pillow which I don't know that it's necessary that it be there Paul kind of goes in and up, so. Okay, let's think about some of this background. Um, let's block in this wall color first, which again, these are neutrals. I wouldn't have to paint them that way. You know, I could uh, make the couch blue, which would be the complement of the orange, and he would really pop off of there. Decisions, decisions, right? A lot of this you just got to figure out as you go. It's a background. It's the background, you know. And again, it's not a commission, so I can do what I want. Let's mix up the three primaries and come up with a uh, neutral color. So I'll take blue and yellow, make a green, and then we'll put red in there. And then we'll start putting some white in there and see what that looks like. And the grays. You know, even though I'm shooting for a gray, they usually lean one way or the other. I want a pretty light, this wall. I'm doing the one thing at a time here. We're doing the wall, which it leans toward yellow. It's a grayed yellow color. see if this is too dark because I don't have it blended very well all right let's get a brush that's a little bigger and we'll get some of our solvent-free liquid on there. All right, we're going to block in the wall first. Got to start someplace, right? But we don't want to cover all the orange. I'm thinking we might, uh, again, add some texture to some of these cushions with a palette knife. That's really all the wall color I see. And we can always go back. I mean, if I want more coverage on it, right now, you know, I've got pink poking through and orange. And all right. Um, the back of the couch is catching less light. Now let me squint and look. Usually that would, you know, you got to explain what's vertical and what's horizontal. I'm going to, um, I'll probably work off of this wall color. Let's put some of the, the darks that we see in here first. 
in the cushion. Again, the wall color is a very similar color to the couch. The couch is a little darker. So we want to get it darker. Put some more transparent red oxide and some yellow ochre. And I even think I'm going to warm it up a little bit more. Again, if we don't, you know, don't stress about it. If, if you get it on there, you don't like it, scrape it off and uh, go at it again. I mean, it'd be nice to get it all exactly right the first time, wouldn't it? Some people seem to be better at that than others. Okay. Let's zoom in on his head as we paint around it, so. Look at this leg, how far this goes in. Goes over about that far, and then kind of out like that. Again, this is a shadow here. I'm not going to leave it that color though. It needs to look like it's uh, part of the couch, so it needs to be in the same family but darker, probably cooler. Getting dark later in the evenings, have you noticed? Makes me feel hopeful. It's winter is leaving. I know it isn't yet, but 
God, I got a thing today in the mail for the census. And it's mandatory that you fill it out. I don't know if you happen to get one or not. I don't know how we were the lucky. It's kind of a pain in the butt, though. They ask everything. Stuff that you would never, you know, tell people. <gasps> Seems very personal. Silly. I mean, they didn't ask Social Security and stuff, but like, you know, how much do you pay for your electric bill and how much do you pay for your water bill? And I know. And then it says, um, what race are you? But then if you check, like I checked white, but then it wanted to know, you know, am I European, am I German, and who knows that? I don't know that. I never had my DNA done. I don't, I don't know that. I know when I checked back on my father's, I could, I actually traced my father's family back to like 1650s and the uh, first person in the country was from England, so I just put England. What's the difference? Uh, what do they do with this stuff anyway? I don't know. I'm actually going to run my stroke sideways because that's the top of the plane of the couch and uh, some of that blue over there. I may have to back you up at some point so you can see better. Okay, what I'm going to do is take some I'm lightening up this color quite a bit. Put a cording. It's not coming off there, is it? It's fighting me. sure what that was about. Mindless stroking, right? We shouldn't do that. You should think about what you're doing. You know, and this shadow, maybe it'll be good, maybe it won't. We'll decide later on. I think we'll go ahead and block in this darker pillow. I'm going to back you out a little more so you can see a little bit better. I'm trying to keep myself off camera too. I prefer it that way.
the pillow's, um, you know, kind of a chocolate brown, but I'm just playing around with some color to decide what I want. I want it to be separate from the dog, so, um, I'm, you know, I don't want it to feel like it's part of the dog, of course, so I'm trying some things, put more blue in it. I think YouTube is wonderful. I spend sometimes more time on there than I watch, you know, shows on there like you would on TV. There's so much good stuff on YouTube. Everything. Like today I was on there. I want to organize my spice cabinet. It's just a mess. So I ordered, uh, the lady gave a link and I ordered um, all these spice jars which are coming Monday with labels and everything. I'm going to get organized. <laughs> See how that goes, right? That's kind of a blue-green color there I put behind him. Again, if I don't like it, we'll redo it. But you can do whatever you wanted. If you wanted to be real creative and p put pattern on the pillar or make a pattern sofa, you know, you could do whatever you wanted. All right. So this, of course, is the couch, and it's going to be the same color as there, but it's a different plane. One needs to be darker and lighter. Um, as I look at it, I'll tell you in the photo, it doesn't look that much different. I'm squinting. It's a little lighter there where it, I think where the light's hitting the front of the dog. Um, little thing here I'm seeing I feel like his head's going to have to come up a little bit there for sure yeah I'm looking at it Would have been kind of cute if he had a collar on him with a tag or something, wouldn't it? But he doesn't. I've done all kinds of things on pets over the years. I did a uh, dog with a jar of peanut butter in his mouth one time. I guess he played with empty jars of peanut butter all the time. It was like his toy. So uh, that was kind of fun. Yeah, actually, there's like a pillow here and like another pillow here. So let's paint that in there. I think I'll warm it up to make it different. I threw this under here just like a shadow.
Mm, I'm not liking that now that I see it on there. I'm going to wipe it off. It's too yellow. I can use the same mixture, but I'm going to put more blue in it, I think. Cool it off some. I told you, I think I watch uh, Craig Nelson, who I like a lot, paint on Fridays on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, you ought to find him. He does live demos. Um, I've got a couple of his DVDs, but he said things that you don't have to explain. Try to leave them very abstract. Like he was doing a painting of a figure and back behind it was like a, a cotton candy machine and you know, he just didn't paint anything exact, you know. He made it very abstract back there because you couldn't really tell what you were seeing. I think it's interesting to not explain everything. I know I've explained that to you before, but we'll throw some of this color up into here too. Kind of separate that tail from the body. Can you see all the way down there? Yeah. And then there's cording here. And this plane would be darker. But I'm trying to stroke in the direction of the objects. This goes down, this comes out. So we got it covered. I still don't like that. I haven't really explained this here, which I do want to, so.
to keep trying to get that cushion. His chest in the photo, of course, is pretty light, um, but I want his focus to be on the your focus to be on the face. He does have um, some whiskers showing. 
throw a few in there. Don't really see them coming out the other side. Let me get away from him here. There's a few things that are a little off, whether or not I want to, you know, the length, you can kind of see here. Yeah, the length from here to here, like, let's get our paintbrush, as a, we use it as a measuring tool. Um, like when I look at this guy, okay, the length of his nose, how's that compare? Okay, about like that. I don't know. It doesn't look too much different. I feel like I brought him out a little far, maybe. So I have to decide whether that matters. So, all right, so that was uh, 54 minutes. We got him blocked in. So I'm going to go to looking at it again. I'm not saying it's done at all. Um, Usually what I do once I've worked on piece for a while, then I set it at the fireplace or some place where I can just stare at it and uh, decide what's off. My husband's got a good eye too when I'm doing a commission and I think I've, I'm there. I usually let him take a real hard look at it too. Again, this is not a commission, but uh, I wanted to definitely feel like a basset hound, so. And I've shifted his face unintentionally a little more that way. He's looking a little more sideways where in the photo he's looking a little, not toward us of course, but now he's pretty much. So, like I said, the way to get him perfectly right is you look at the amount of white from here to here so his nose would really begin about here. So it's a matter of whether I want to make the adjustments and pull him back. I would definitely do that if it was a commission. But whether it matters, you know, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with him, so. Whoa. Again, the main thing is that he feels like a basset hound. All right. Thank you for joining me. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. A couple more and we'll be up to a thousand. Slow growing, but it's getting there. All right, thank you for those of you that do check in on me often or, or new to my channel. Um, I really appreciate it. I'm having fun with it. That's why I'm doing it. Hopefully you enjoy it too. All right, catch you soon. Have a nice night.